Akwaba, Karibu, welcome, 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 welcome to the fifth annual Black Sustainability Summit. I hope you enjoyed those master drummers from the First African Church in Bethonia, Georgia. I'm here to do the libation for you this morning. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with libation, um, libation is an offering that involves pouring a liquid, which can be water or wine. And today I'm pouring water as it has no enemies um, to my plant here. Um, while we bring homage, we pay, pay to our ancestors. We pour only libation for elders that were moral and responsible. It is about honoring and invoking this right, positive kind of energy and wisdom into our lives. Okay, I can find my water. Here we go. After I call a name of our ancestors, um, you can open up your mic and say Ashe if you, if you like. We call upon our ancestors far and near, fathers of our fathers, mothers of our mothers to bear witness to what we have done. And by their example to continue to inspire us toward reclaiming our African minds, regenerating our African spirits, liberating our homeland, and reclaiming our greatness as a people. We pour libation, Ashe, to bring into our midst their venerable African spirit, radiating their great wisdom, courage, dedication, and unyielding commitment to victory by any means necessary. It is in the honor of our creator, our ancestors, our children, and our children's children that we pour this libation for the creator and the various manifestations of the creative spirit. We pour libations, Ashe, for our esteemed ancestors who laid the foundation for human civilization and who provided the wisdom by which we live and the miles by which our lives are guided. We call on Imhotep, our sheikh. We call on King Masamusa, Masa, Masa our sheikh. We call on Nana Ya Atasantawa, our sheikh. We call on Kim Rem, uh, King Remesis, Remesis II, our sheikh. We call on Akhenaten, our sheikh. Tahaka, our sheikh. Queen Zinga, our sheikh. Nanny of Jamaica, our sheikh. Ashe. Queen Sheba, Queen Sheba, Ashe. Ashe. Nefertiti, Ashe. Tu Akaman, Ashe. Tuto, Tukaka, Ashe. We call on our, our report libation for our esteemed answers who have suffered the atrocities and horrors of the African Holocaust, the Ma'afa, and yet demonstrated the victorious power of the African spirit against adversity by maintaining their dignity no matter the cost. We call on Marcus Garvey. We call on Harriet Tubman, Ashe. Ashe. We call on Denmark BC, Ashe. Ashe. We call on Desaline, Ashe. Ashe. We call on Nat Turner, Ashe. Ashe. We call on Nanny from Jamaica, Ashe. We call on Journal Truth, Ashe. We call on Frederick Douglass, Ashe. And we pour libation finally for our children. No, we're going to call on our ancestors. I'm going to have an opportunity for all of you to open up your mic and call on your own ancestors, Ashe. Ashe. You can open your, all of you can open up your mic and call on your ancestors, your positive ancestors. Who Regina, Mr. Blind. Ashe. Ashe. That's what my question is. Ashe. Mary Johnson. Ashe. 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 and Maddie Barnett. Ashe. Ashe. Simon Blind. Ashe. George Turner Sr. Ashe. Geneva Rose. Ashe, and I call on my father, John B. Ellis, my mother, Delma Ellis. Ashe. Granddaddy Rand, um, Robinson. Ashe. Ashe. S.J. Bell. Ashe. Mama Rupa. Mama Holiday. Regina. Ashe. Ashe. Minnie Duffy. Ashe. And finally, for our children and their children and future generations of Africans to come, that they too, in their time, will vindicate our race from all adversaries and continue to, imp to imprint upon the world the great genius of African humanity. We pour our base in our shape. May they be with us today. May the energy surround us and make this a positive fifth annual African Black Sustainability Summit. And so we engulf this occasion to affirm our Africanity. It is done. Ashe. 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 Ashe.
Okay, thanks, Mama Nobantu, for such a beautiful welcome and entry. You all are welcomed. I uh, welcome the, the spirits of your ancestors, of those that are elevated ancestors, not within your bloodline, and those within your bloodline, and for those generations yet to come. Uh, we welcome you all to take a look around our um, the Hoover platform and to get familiar because we are going to be moving forward with our agenda as scheduled. So you all have some time now. We give thanks to Mama Nobantu Ankawanda for opening us up and for being our elder here and for laying the path for us to even be on this journey for African sustainability and Black sustainability. Thank you, Mama. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Um, this is Sister Raina and Sister Yeman Brewer. Um, uh, thank you all for bearing with us. We're so excited to see so many of you all on this rising. So welcome from the Black Sustainability Summit Organizing Committee. Um, sister Raina, <clears throat> Afia Raina here with you. My sister Yeman Brewer, do you want to try your, your mic again, Yeman? Yes, I should oh. be. Okay, there we go. That's better. And um, Mama Nobantu, Uncle Ando, who you all heard earlier today. So the session that you're joining is around sustainability from a Pan-African context. While we're doing this work, the purpose of you being here. And before we get started with that formal presentation, Yema, myself, and uh, Mama Nobantu, and the rest of our team uh, have a few things that we want to lay out for you, all right? Some housekeeping. Um, Likely you all have landed on this page. This is a screenshot of what you all should see. Your name should be up in the top left-hand corner for, um, for reference as to making sure that you are the one that's logged in and not logged in into, underneath any other email address or account. That's the name that everyone else will see. You'll see here over on the side, your main navigation for Whova. This is a new platform for all of us. So please bear with us. If you've had experience in the past using Whova, uh, there's a discussion board. You can create your own discussion and let people know that you're an expert so that they can reach out to you and get support and assistance. Um, you would then be able to select the agenda over here on the far left-hand side and see what the rest of the schedules are. Most of you who are here are not having that trouble because you were able to find it. So kudos to you. Um, the attendees, you can network with other attendees who are here, community boards or just other places for you all to stay connected. And there are messages. If you like presenters, folks who are speaking, people who are coming up, if you wanna connect with them directly, you wanna message them, you can do so right there. Or you can scroll down directly to speakers <clears throat> and jump from talking to everyone and trying to weed that out to going straight down to the speaker section here where my mouse is rolling over. So just a few little housekeeping rules here. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to you for this next slide. Um, it's more housekeeping, but we are excited and humble that you saw value in being here and we want you all to feel comfortable exploring. Thank you all again for joining us. We I'll just quickly run through um, some more of our um, community rules, you know, for the summit and to make sure that we maintain a, a safe, peaceful, um, cooperative environment. So we'll just leave this on the screen a bit for you all to see for yourselves, but we wanna make sure that we're mindful of, of everyone else that is participating here, the presenters, the hosts, moderators, um, the support staff, as well as you, the attendees, we want to remain, uh, maintain respect um, with our communication, um, even with chatting um, and sending messages. Um, be present and engage. We wanna be mindful of our communication. Um, we are, we're choosing to be here for the experience and for the learning from each other. Um, we also wanna make sure that there is no spamming or trolling. Uh, please do not send multiple messages to uh, the chat board or directly to presenters, um, you know, with anything you might be selling or affiliated with, um, 
you can engage with people and let them know if you can connect with them offline or at a separate time um, with whatever it is that you would like to share, but we don't want to be bombard anyone. Um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to avoid uh, multiplication of discussion groups and topics. Um, please scroll um, through the, the topics on the uh, community board and the session Q&A and, and, you know, you and join conversations that have already uh, started from those who have posted already. What would your grandmama do think? <laughs> Any ethical misconduct on this platform will lead to you uh, being banned, removed, uh, and we have a no refund policy for the summit. So we don't anticipate any of those issues, uh, but we do need to say it up front, um, maintain the respect for everyone here and have a pleasant experience. Um, violations and accountability we know you know better, but in the case that there's any inappropriate behavior or abuse on the platform, um, or you notice that from anyone else, please email Black Sustainability Summit at gmail.com right away and put in the subject line Hoover issue so we can address that as well. So don't want to spend too much more time on rules, but again, let's be respectful and um, have a cooperative um, atmosphere and we'll definitely have time to network and exchange all throughout. So with that, uh, let us move on. I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Yeah, I think that's everything. I think it's just, um, we know you can't make every single session or you may try, uh, just rest assured that, um, we are recording each one of the sessions. And, uh, for those who are, uh, signed up to get the replays, those will be available um, to you all after the summit. So you can go back through and look at them. If you register each day, the recordings will be available for you to access while you're on Hoover in the event that you missed the day before or the day of, so that you will have access during the time that the summit is going on. So um, if you don't have the mobile app, download it, put it on your phone. It's just a good way for you to take it on the go. We know people are not going to be able to sit in front of their computers consistently, and we don't expect you to. Uh, get up, stretch, move around, feel good. Uh, and at the same time, you know, you can take it with you and listen, um, especially for those that may be um, visually impaired as well. You can just tune in and listen in to these sessions. Um, so I think you my great job on the going over our agreements, our conduct, uh, where we are leading with respect, always have patience, and we know that everyone is going to come from the same path or viewpoints or stance, um, but we always move through with respect. We're all here for one goal, one aim, one destiny, one vision. So let's let's lead with that and always assume the best. You know, it's easy to misread how somebody may have uh, wanted it to go. Tone does not translate well virtually. So lead with, you know, if someone says, I didn't get that. It doesn't sound like I didn't get that. It was, I didn't get that. You know, try to try to read it with the, the lightest heart possible and trust and verify. Although we have done magnificent, magnificent work already to reach out to all of our presenters. We love their work. We support their work. Um, they will be providing presentations. And if for any reason, you know, something is shared, we want to be very clear that we selected them because we are aligned with their goals and missions. However, uh, any presentations that they provided does not constitute an endorsement. So we're not saying that we can verify, you know, everything 100% is, is going to go. So we want you all to trust that we've done our job and still take it into your own hands to verify that information. All right. All right. Well, this is Sustainability from a Pan-African Context. You're here with uh, Sister Afia uh, Raina Turner Greenlee and our sister Yema, Yema Brewer. Um, so we opened up this morning with libation, paying honor and reverence and respect to those who have come before us, those ancestors who are no longer with us, who have paved the way, those elevated ancestors and those elders who are currently here that continuously pave the way and that are passing the torch, as well as our contemporaries. So at this moment, we just want to give thanks to them. We know that we are the uh, returning ancestors. We are the relatives of 
uh, the creator, if you will, our oldest relative is the creator in a sense. Um, and we just wanna pay homage and respect to all the knowledge and wisdom that's been shared with us because we are standing in the shade of trees we did not plant and we give thanks to them. Mama Nobantu, Mama Nobantu Uncle Wanda is here in the center. You all uh, had a beautiful welcome and opening with libation as she welcomed in the ancestral energy of those who have come before us um, and encouraged us to pave that way. If you missed it, we have that recorded. Um, but you all are here to learn more about why we're doing this work, why this work is important. Uh, our vision is to mobilize people of African descent to be self-sufficient and return to designing solutions that apply nature inspired and environmentally respectful practices. Our mission is to do that through connecting, teaching and equipping those that are already in sustainability fields to resources and development opportunities across the diaspora. And for those who are not in sustainability fields to train them up so that they can become trusted resources um, for experts and contractors on sustainable development. So what does sustainability mean to you? Y'all can put in the chat. This is going to be interactive. We can see we can see the chat running at the same time. Um, oops. What does sustainability mean to you? And what does that term mean? For us, it is the ability to exist constantly, minimizing and avoiding the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain ma'at, balance, kananga. Um, and to do so with the mind state of us considering seven generations ahead of time. So the foods that we eat, the packaging that is wrapped in, um, the tissues and all of those types of things, the waste that we have, those should all be able to break down because in future generations, our children are going to be exposed to that. And so we need to make sure that that's something that's top of mind. So it really sets the stage for the fact that none of this is a new concept right? Sustainability, green infrastructure, resilience, all these new terms, renewable energy. These are not new concepts for African people. We've been doing this. Sustainable agriculture, as you see here in Kemet, in present day Egypt. Uh, here in Senegal, Mama Nobantu mentioned the drummers. It's just divine timing, right? This is the exact same region uh, in Senegal where they actually have converted homes. We already know how to capture and harvest our own rainwater to support the family structure and to have the design and architecture support that. We do it in such a beautiful way. This is a present day version of some of those more ancient homes. And the Giza, the Giza pyramids had power that were already within them. So these are not new concepts, right? However, we have to go back and fetch a lot of this knowledge and wisdom down to the electricity that's been found inside of the pyramids. Our elder, um, Vincent Harding, made a mention around self-sufficiency, meaning the death of enslavement. So as we look at that and we look at culture being our immune system, remember Ani has outlined, and we know that culture is embedded in so many different things that we do and how we move through this, um, it really is important for us to make a stark distinction between the African worldview and the Eurocentric or European worldview, right? where we are dealing with and reclaiming ourselves because we have been misinformed, misaligned and indoctrinated to ab adopt a worldview that is not one of our own, that we return to being part of the whole, knowing that woman and man is a part of nature, that we considering seven generations ahead of time and that this must be a regenerative process and not an extractive process. We are not separate from the whole, we are one with the sun, the earth, the air. We don't have a life, we are life. And knowing that we are life, what does that mean for us and where we stand today? All right. So, again, my name is Yema Brewer, Vice Chair of the Planning Committee for the summit. And um, as I was doing some social media for uh, the summit promoting it, you know, I, I came across this image um, and shared this on our social media and asked you all to let us know when you joined um, what you think about this definition. Uh, many of us were very used to acronyms and, um, excuse me. So I said, hey, what are we about as the Black Sustainability Network, which will be formally launching in 2021? And it's really about that RBG, uh, which is our Black liberation colors and flag uh, that we often see 
uh, with the mainstream sustainability field uh, terminology of 3BL, which stands for triple bottom line, uh, also often phrased as people planet uh, for sustainability. And so I juxtapose those two um, and was thinking more through um, the concept of that. Let's see, go to the next um, slide here. Um, and also what our mission is about as far as being black and green. Um, so RBG plus TBL, again, for our RBG um, term that was coined in the early 1900s. We want to give a shout out to the UNIA and other um, movement leaders and um, ancestors who were having many of the same conversations that we have today around our identity as a people of um, African descent around the world, because certainly 100 years ago, um, we were dispersed uh, definitely for other reasons. Um, here we have our, thank you, Raina. Um, people are calling, they wanna get involved with the summit. So, um, so shout out to those um, leaders who paved the way with the terminology of RG, RBG. So juxtapose with triple bottom line, um, red is for the blood of our people. And what that means to us is um, unity amongst all people of African descent in honor of our ancestors and for our well-being. We've already opened up the summit um, demonstrating that. Black for profit, uh, what we gain by collaborating, again, as a unified people and the value of our collective capital, our, our human resources, our social resources, all the things that we can gain by working together. And green, of course, for the planet, respecting and sustaining the resources of Mother Africa and the entire world. Um, the, our concerns, our efforts, um, our contribution to uh, advance Advancing things on this uh, planet, has it? We have been a nature-based people uh, from the beginning, and so we want to continue um, that legacy in the work that we're doing here with the Black Sustainability Network and with you all. all right. Uh, I think we're all tuned into a lot of the current events. Um, definitely, this year we have all been impacted by uh, what has been called a global pandemic with the COVID-19 and the ways nations have responded to that and how that has affected our daily lives. Um, we've had ongoing issues prior to 2020. And I think we all agree that it has been exacerbated. It has become, um, these issues have become um, more of a challenge and more apparent and more talked about because of what the entire world uh, um, had to experience in response to such a pandemic. Uh, currently, there are some trending topics in some various African countries. Um, I won't get into detail with all of them, uh, but we, we definitely, uh, as we know, a lot of things are political, but uh, we definitely could not proceed with this summit and not make mention of what's happening real time right now. Even the things that are not highlighted in uh, mainstream media for sure, um, our own independent media and use of social media is allowing us to be more aware of certain things that mainstream news does not necessarily cover or explain in accurate ways. So we just wanna, first of all, be in spirit and solidarity with um, our brothers and sisters throughout the diaspora um, wherever they are, whatever they're going through. One of the things that um, Raina and I had a discussion about um, preparing for this summit and, um, you know, busy in our computers and our world planning for this summit, but also keeping up with these current events and, and thinking about this global network that we want to build with you all collectively is that um, when we talk about sovereignty and self-sufficiency and, um, and being united to work together, we sometimes where we're, uh, our perspective on that is, is influenced, um, not even sometimes, it is influenced by where we live. For her and I and some of, um, of you, we're, we're in the United States, um, we're in Europe, 
Um, we're in Guys. countries where we are not the good um, jobs. Thank you so much, Miss PJ. We are in. Okay. Okay. okay, excuse me. Please mute your mic. Yes, thank you. Uh, many of us are in countries where we are not the so-called racial and ethnic, ethnic uh, uh, predominant group. Um, so our perspective is a bit different when we talk about building community with each other, with our people. Um, but many of our brothers and sisters are in countries um, where it is majority people of African descent and the leadership is, is reflected as such. Um, but yet there are still these um, social and political issues affecting the daily lives of many of our brothers and sisters. It's more of an issue of class um, and social status than it is a, a racial hierarchy we experience in some of the other um, countries that we live in where we are the so-called so minority as far as population numbers and, and um, racial identification. And so we want to emphasize that we stand in solidarity with all of our people around the globe. And we've, we, what this network is about, what the summit is about is focusing on um, positivity in, in action. So solutions to um, our condition, our status as a people, um, and being in you know cooperation, working together for the well-being of each other and for the planet. And so we know that we are not on the same page and in full alignment with all other people of African descent. So our focus is on solutions, and our focus is on our network and collaborating with of African descent that are, are of a like mind, similar values, uh, similar vision, you know, to really create the world that we want. And so where there's injustices in, um, in other predominantly Black African descent countries, we stand in solidarity with these people and we speak out against um, any abuses and injustices, even if it's from the leadership of fellow people of African descent. And so that is something that we want to make clear here. As, as we proceed and expand our network. And please do engage with us. Let us, you know, let us reach out to others to get involved with our work and our mission so that can we can really feel connected to what is going on in other parts of the world. You know, get more, especially get accurate stories. When we hear the voices of, of, of more and more of us, you know, we, we can get some truth from that and not just rely about the things that we are reading or well-intentioned hashtags on social media, like many of us are seeing. And so, you know, th there will be more discussions about that, um, but we, we definitely wanted to take a moment to acknowledge things that are happening in places like Nigeria and elsewhere at, at this time. Thank you. Um, and as, as Yema has mentioned, you know, all of the things that are going on, is not just local. Is not just here. Um, it's not just here where we are, where you are, where you're sitting. This is happening across the globe. Um, the injustices are happening. We know that this is institutionalized. And we know that there's still a trend, an upward trend for projected growth for African people, right? Um, where we can see ourselves going and what the plan has already been laid out for a lot of countries around the globe are getting ready to experience a massive amount of population growth. And what that means is that that's urban sprawl, that's unrestricted growth, that's called urbanization, and it's happening around the globe. We see it here. Uh, when I say here, I'm talking about where I physically am in Metro Atlanta. We're looking at having over 8 million people here just within this city by 2020. Africa alone, the entire continent, because we know it's not a country. Africa, the entire continent is projected to have the fastest urban growth rate in the world. By 2050, Africa cities are getting ready to have 950 million people. And this is happening in very small areas. And so what is it gonna look like when we see that level of growth? Are we going to replicate a broken model and a broken system? Or are we going to design the solutions that our ancestors have had where you can still build, design, grow, and educate your children from a, an African-centered perspective? But when we look at this growth and development and what the forecasts are for the continent, look at these countries in Lagos, down in Nigeria, 
um, in the city is looking at 15.8 million people, 15 million in Kinshasa in, in the Congo and the DRC. In Cairo, it's going to be like over 23% growth because this was pulled from last year. And we know that COVID has had an impact on it. We don't welcome that type of energy as far as a, a downpour, but we have to be very clear around what is getting ready to happen for our people. And we need to be operating from a global mindset because what's happening there is happening here. And we're seeing it and we're hearing it in North America as far as gentrification and displacement. In South America as looking at your land loss. You all will hear from presenters throughout this entire summit that are gonna focus on not just North America, but what's going on in their hometowns. We have presenters from Colombia, from Brazil that are um, on the continent that are talking about the same issues. So what are our solutions going to look like? And those solutions cannot be taken apart from the fact that we're a part of this whole and we're going to have to deal with a reality that the climate is changing. And knowing that we as a people have contributed very little to the world's greenhouse gas emissions and yet we are going to disproportionately receive the larger impacts of this. So what solutions do we have? The solution that we've come up with while you all are here and while we're looking at sustainability from a Pan-African perspective and not just this, let's hug a tree or let's go and plant a tree or, you know, I want to go and conserve um, this particular portion of land, not to take it from that European stance, but really to look at ourselves and see ourselves as the renewable energy that we need. We have all the resources, the knowledge and wisdom. Look at all of these presenters that have come together. This is from past years. Right. This I think this was from one year alone, and this was just one of the pages that I could fit on here. We have been curating this content information, these workshops for years and years and years. And we know that collectively our social energy, as Jessica Gordon Nimhart um, put in her book, Collective Courage, um, she was quoting Du Bois. Um, social energy is the collective genius and cooperative spirit that makes our social cultural system work. And we have to look at that as a form of currency as well. It can't just be something that we that we conceive of. So we look at sustainable development. Here's an option. Here's a vision that doesn't replicate some of these broken models, but we can go back and fetch this knowledge and wisdom. We retain that information. We can look at traditional systems of what we've done in the past if we're not aware of it. Some of the economic systems that were laid out in place from a traditional economic system, if you can look at the Palenque of Colombia or the Aborigines or the Mbuti of the Congo, you know, what they produced was determined by tradition. And then that was determined by their customs and the culture. And then who did they produce it for? It was centered around what we can do for our family. And we've moved so far away from that. So let's return. Uh, Sister Yangma mentioned our uh, Black Sustainability Network, and we know our next session is coming up. So we're going to make sure that these slides are available for you all. And for those that need to join the next session, we fully understand. Um, at the same time, we want you all to join our network and to come together with brothers and sisters of like minds. Um, we have an impact fund where we support and assist our members so that we don't have to go out and beg, borrow, and do whatever from other people that we have the energy that we need. We have the resources that we need, the knowledge and wisdom. And now we have a crowdfunding um, option for us to support the Black and Green projects that we believe in. Some are featured here, some of whom you'll hear from today. And we encourage you all to ensure that if you really want to go fast, go alone. If you really truly wanna go far, let's go together. And that's what this is about. You all can look at the rest of our focus areas on our website, peruse through what community development means. This presentation will be available for you all after we finish. Um, we are looking at energy. We are looking at economics. What alternative systems are there? Sustainable ag, our health, our holistic health with a W, that's us being whole. Our, we'll hear from folks around eco, friendly housing and construction in the past. Pre-COVID, we've also done workshops where you actually get a chance to build those out. Um, preparedness, survival, what are we going to do? What plan are we going to have? Regardless of how this election turns out, you better have a plan. And you better understand how you're going to deal with your water, your resources, and your waste. And so as we highlight some of those members of our network who have been here, who've been doing phenomenal work um, and whom we're partnering with, for the upcoming Black Sustainability Summit in Ghana. We're glad that you joined us today. We're glad that you're here and we hope that you all continue to join us for the rest of these three days, all right? We'll go ahead and take some questions now 
And I think, um, Yema, I don't know if you want to pop into the other room just to make sure that the youth are, are good to go for their 1.30, um, or I can do so and you can take questions here. I don't see any questions right now, um, but you know, definitely please, are we gonna allow people to unmute their mic or just ask questions? If, yeah, you, can have, yeah. if you have a question, we have some time now and, and you know, definitely on behalf of BSN and the welcome uh, committee here, we definitely want to hear from you so you can unmute yourselves if you have anything to contribute or ask or, or for us or the group, um, anything about the flow for the summit. Uh, please do share. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Vivian Stewart. Yes. Hi, Yema. How you doing? Thanks for the email. And Raina, oh my gracious, five years ago, <laughs> I talked to Raina on the phone. Um, I wanted to, could you give us a little more uh, about information about the fund and uh, and how we can contribute? Yes, um, on our website, you can go and we're going to be redoing our website after this summit. So some things will likely change if you visit us around December or January, but currently our website, if you go to www.blacksustainabilitysummit.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you will see, a matter of fact, look, we have technology right here. We don't even have to just think about it. Let me find my screen so I can share it with you and walk you through. Um, you can visit our website and on the, on the menu button, you will see join network. When you select join our network, it will, it will populate out um, where you can contribute to that, that fund. And you can also make a distinction whether or not you wanna to contribute to a specific fund or to a specific project that you like that you see, or you wanna contribute just to the general fund for it to be evenly distributed. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, Jambu, uh, this is uh, Mark Dunstan uh, calling from Massachusetts. Uh, I, <clears throat> I'm so grateful that, that I was guided to the summit. This is exactly what, what I've been looking for right now. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let me know if I get on your nerves because I'm just going to be bombarding you guys with questions. Um, first, first question is, um, I don't, I, I don't remember them by name, but there are specific, uh, you know, um, Africans on the continent who have won awards, you know, in terms of the Nobel Prize and in terms of other other awards dealing with uh, the environment. Of, uh, you know, they've basic they've basically gotten world recognition. Uh, are there any are, are there any is there anything in the works where we'll be connecting with some of these key people of uh, one one person who comes to mind uh and this was from years ago so sister she um i think she was uh either in New York or Kenya and she was just planting trees you know just one after another of Hungarian. now uh just like just like Greta Thunberg has global recognition for what she's doing as a teenager there are a lot of uh Africans who are doing the same work that we don't know about and I'm wondering if if uh if there are any plans to do a direct connection with the work that they're doing and you know uniting with that Yes, um, that's precisely what the summit is about. We have presenters that are coming um, to us from all over the globe. Um, if you check our agenda, you'll be able to see some of them. Some um, are well-known names and some are not so well-known. They're doing this work uh, grassroots. And so we have to make sure that we don't replicate that same hierarchy of you know, elevating those who have been uh, notably recognized and overlooking those of us who have been on the ground that continue to do this work that are unsung heroes and sheroes because all of us are out here doing this work. And so yes to your question. And 
we have um, a very integrated platform to make sure that we have a balance of both of those. So you'll be hearing from some presenters from Ghana. I think we have two from Ghana. Um, we had one from South Africa. I don't believe he's going to be able to join us anymore. So we've been updating our, our presentation. Um, we have some folks from Brazil. We have um, presenters, who else? I know in the past we've had Rwanda. presenters from the Gambia. Yes, Rwanda. Um, this year. Um, so yes, you'll be able to hear from them about the work that they've been doing because we are making that that connection. It's not just for those of us that are speaking English either. Some of the presentations will be in their native tongue. And we encourage you all to tune in and to download Google Translate or to just hold it and wait until we have the translation available for you. Um, but please come in, tune in and support them because they are here because they want to see us connected. We have some presenting in Portuguese um, as well. So Thank you, thank you, thank you for that question. It's very important to uh, highlight that, and I'm glad that you you mentioned it. And I hope that this answered your question. Uh, yes, yes, it did. Uh, I just I just want to add to what you said in terms of the the, the family in Brazil. <clears throat> there are uh, spiritual warriors uh, who who took it upon themselves to protect the Amazon rainforest, and they're being assassinated by. Uh, uh, by the president of Brazil, another um, another uh, Trump groupie. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, raise raise that, you know, if that's relevant to what we're talking about right now. Yes, I think they present on Sunday. Yema, correct me if I'm wrong. The Brazil group. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Sunday Our morning. Time, morning for us as well for them too. So please, please tune in and. Um, and, ra and raise that question as well. Is there anyone else that has any questions or did you have any other questions before we move on and open the floor so others was, get a chance? There was a question in the Hoover session um, Q&A chat about what is the current population of Atlanta? I think it was closer to six the most recent, Well, this was a census years so I get right right it was I think it was closer to I pulled this um closer to January um I think it was closer to like 6.5 inside of the presentation though I also hyperlinked it to the data um so if you would like that I can I can pull that up um but yes I think it was closer to 6.5 so that's expected 2 million um close to, I guess, 1.5 million, if you will. Um, but we're not looking at even what does it mean when you have so many people moving to an area? It's not just to build more homes. It's not just to create more, um, create more living spaces. That's infrastructure. Those pipes are only so big to deal with the waste that we have as humans. Not to mention all these people now with animals and dogs and pets and things like that. That's waste. When it rains, all of that flushes back into our water system and we end up having to drink it. And so we have to be mindful about living in these very tight and condensed spaces and making sure that we are looking at how we're going to manage that. And maybe even reshift the way in which we think about the desire to live in an urban city, right? Why are we chasing that? What are we looking to do? Are there jobs here? A lot of people are saying that, you know, right now they're unemployed and the farmers are popping. You know, they've got food, water, clothing, shelter, and we're still rushing toward this, this, this one view. It's not to take or put down on one. It's one to just think through and re reconceptualize why we're doing that and why we're moving to those places and spaces. So um, it's very, very helpful to to consider that. I saw someone's hand. Um, and Raina, Raina, would you uh, would you be uh, um, having a fund to purchase land, uh, whether it's in the United States or in Africa? So is there a fund for that to purchase, to own? See, that's for me, it is um, as an elder at 72, uh, I always encourage uh, land ownership. Uh, and the other, do you think in terms of studying or somebody studying uh, the uh, cryptocurrency? I'm also do a little uh, information about that um, I'm with people who are involved with that also uh, as another form of currency to get away from, uh, you know, some of the craziness of the dollar. And um, so... 
Yes. Um, I know, I think it was 2018 where we had a presenter come down and do a full lecture on cryptocurrency. And uh, we did capture that, we captured that workshop as well. And we have his contact information, but he is not, good, good. You know, he's not the only one. We are thinking about alternative economic systems. Um, some of our presenters yes. do have land on larger, on larger scales where they may not be promoting it very widely, but as a member of the network, you will have access to them. You're already a member of the network, I know. Um, so I'll make sure to put you in touch with them depending on where you're looking. If you want to stay in North America, if you want to repatriate to um, a country in, in Africa, we have some people there that have villages, that have spaces, that have done, gone through that process of respecting the land to procure it, and then to connect mm -hmm. you with them so you can work out you know, I would like to get an acre here or two acres here because we do have to think about what is an alternative for us, for those who aren't staying. And for those who are staying, what are some real valid alternatives? And I know that we have a few land panels this, this um, over this weekend where they're gonna be talking about procuring land, what they've done. One has 1600 acres, some have 88 acres, some are just operating off of five acres. And what can you do realistically? And so to learn what they've done, how they did it, ask them those questions, link up with them. That's what this platform is here for, so. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mark had his hand up or was there someone else, Yema? Uh, yes, I, that was me. I, I, I just wanted to comment on what you were saying about the wastewater issue. The irony about it is that the, the methane from waste is energy, energy that can be utilized with the, with the proper uh, technology. So, um, I mean, and I'm even hearing, I, I don't know if, if anyone wanted to pay attention to the, uh, <clears throat> to the, debates and, and, and to the campaign uh, with the U.S. But uh, Biden did bring up a technology that uh, people are just discovering now. There's um, a, a plant that's being built in, uh, I think, Vancouver, Canada, where it's literally extracting and, it's extracting and absorbing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and this one plant has <clears throat> the ability has the ability of absorbing the equivalent amount of carbon dioxide as 142 million trees, or at least that's that's what they say. So um, there are all kinds of exciting technologies that are out there, <clears throat> and I think that there are ways of you know, as opposed to of, you know, the conditions that a lot of our people are living in in the continent to make full use of that, to fully utilize that. Definitely. And give thanks for that. Um, I do know um, there are some who have some, um, as we're speaking about technology, I think there were two brothers that were in Ghana who were looking at biomass um, you know, taking that waste and harvesting, harvesting the, um, the gases to create their own kind of like hyper local power plants, if you will. Um, so I think, I think we need to, oh, he's talking about carbon sequestering. So he's looking at not so much looking at biomass. I'm look, reading in the chat, not so much looking at a biomass system um, for energy or for renewable energy, but looking more so at how we utilize trees and nature, like when we have old growth forests, they can sequester so much more. That's why it's so important is when you're being civically engaged here where people have a, a mandate or a policy around, okay, well, what are we gonna do with our trees? Well, we can cut down all the old trees and we'll pay this tax, um, this recompense tax to just plant new trees. That old growth tree is able to sequester so much more carbon out of the air. You should be fighting for that tree to stay if development is going to continue moving forward. Um, I think that, I don't know if that's what, what he's speaking about. I see Amory um, put that comment down there. So did I clarify that? Uh, that is it more so along like the importance of uh, our, our trees or are you talking more about utilizing? Um, well, I'm, I'm talking about uh, <clears throat> using the best of both, uh, use, using using the technology in in uh, in a synergistic way, where 
if you find the right balance of combining the available technology with God's technology, uh, you will be able to reverse this um, carbon footprint while there's still time. Beautiful. I, I agree, Asha. We all on the same page. Um, we are all on the same page. And I know some people are um, heading over to that to the youth panel shortly. Um, so I want you all to be mindful of that. We all want to be there in the place and space to support them. Are there any other questions that you have for Yema, myself, Manobantu, anyone else on the call? Any things that you want to just bring up? You can unmute your microphone. You can type it in the chat in Hoover so we can consistently respond. If you're using the chat in Zoom, Hi, it will disappear. Greetings. I know that voice. Where is she? <laughs> I just want to say I am so proud of you and Yama for all this work that you put forth. I just want to give thanks. I'm so happy to be here. That's all I want to say. Oh, give thanks. All right. If there are no if there are no other questions, we are going to just um, show the next slide preparing for the, the upcoming session and then we will see you all in there.